Hey folks, welcome back to the kitchen. We're doing something special tonight for dinner. We're doing Portuguese spaghetti. You ever heard of that? If not, stick with us. So Portuguese spaghetti, not something that you're actually going to see Portuguese people make a lot. It's kind of something that I came with up with over the years. My daughters really liked it. But if the Portuguese did make it, they'd call it spaghetti de Portuguese. We're starting with some Portuguese sausage, some linguiça. Silver brand's generally about the best, unless you can find something better. Can't really find this in the Midwest. This was sent out here by a good friend of mine, Kathy, because she knew we couldn't get it out here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this long ways twice. So we're going to quarter it long ways and then we're going to slice it across to give us little small pieces. And I'll show you what that looks like. There's what it looks like. We use three sticks because three sticks generally is about a pound. And if you don't want to use linguine, you can just use about any whatever your favorite sausage is is fine. So we're going to put this in our big skillet, kind of my wok skillet. I've already got my water heating for our pasta, so it's ready to go. And then while this starts to simmer, I'm going to chop a whole white onion. As soon as your onions are chopped, go ahead and throw them in. The linguiça sausage is a partially cooked sausage. It's not completely fresh, so you don't have to cook it forever. And then uh, we're going to get some garlic to put in here now. We added the equivalent of about four to six cloves of garlic. Uh, depending on the size of your cloves and then we're going to let this simmer for a little bit we're going to let that sausage release a lot of its flavors we're going to let those onions soften up and then we'll get with the next ingredients smelling wonderful so we've got some browning going on we're going to let some more of this liquid cook out of here reduce it down and then we'll be just left with kind of the oil that came out of the linguiça so I'm going to start throwing some spices here so we can heat the spices up and they'll release their oil as well. We're going to put a tablespoon of chili powder, a tablespoon of cumin. We're going to put a uh, teaspoon of rosemary, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Cinnamon is going to make it uniquely Portuguese. You're not going to really taste it. It's going to kind of be in the background. You're going to go, hmm, what's that? really good so we're gonna get those spices in all right look at that beautiful deep color so now we're gonna take a quart a whole quart of our tomatoes our homegrown tomatoes and then we're gonna take a pint of our homemade ketchup you can use store-bought ketchup is just fine you can also use store-bought tomatoes that would be equal to about 32 ounces of tomatoes crushed tomatoes like the big can uh, I think they're 28 ounces now, but that's fine. And then your your pint would be 16 ounces of ketchup. So we're going to stir that up and get that all incorporated. We've got that incorporated now, so we're going to bring that up to a simmer. And we're going to reduce it just a little bit to where it's the consistency that we want. It's already pretty good, so we don't need to do a lot. And then just like any other spaghetti... We're going to cook our noodles al dente, maybe a little before al dente. We're going to put them in the sauce and we'll finish cooking them in the sauce so they pick up some of the flavor of the sauce. All right, we got her up to a simmer. I tasted it for salt because you always want to do that last so you don't get it too salty because there's salt a little bit in the tomatoes and in some other stuff, especially like if you were using bacon or something, which we're not. That's got salt in it just in an example. So... When you're done is when you, when you want to taste it for salt. So we're going to add about a teaspoon of salt to this because I think it needs it. And if you wanted to cut the acidity just a little bit, you could also add like a, a, a teaspoon of sugar or something like that. But I kind of like the acidity that this has. Um, I think it's going to come out real good. Now if you wanted to spice this up, right now would be the time. You could add some cayenne pepper, some crushed red pepper or like our chili powder, our homemade chili powder with the habanero chili. You could use a little bit of that. But we know Kelly's not a fan of heat, so I'm going to use some of our 
homemade chili powder that I made with the habaneros, and I'm going to sprinkle that on my plate to bring the heat up. You can also use hot sauce on your plate or whatever if your spouse doesn't enjoy the heat. So I think we're at the point where we're going to put our spaghetti on. Our consistency is about right. Remember your noodles are going to soak up some of this sauce and we'll thicken this up quite a bit. So we've tasted it again for salt. It's perfect. Fantastic. So let's get our noodles in. I'm using a Rotel pasta because that's one of my favorite. But you can use any pasta you like up to and including spaghetti noodles or uh, regular um, linguine or something like that. Or you can make Portuguese lasagna out of this for all, you know, intents and purposes. So always stir your spaghetti and always salt your water before you put your spaghetti in. Because uh, spaghetti don't come seasoned. And then you stir it just to keep it from sticking. Never ever put oil in there because the oil sometimes will coat your pasta and not allow the sauce to soak into the pasta. So we're going to cook this just prior to al dente. We're going to try our pasta. See where we're at. That's perfect, right where we want it. About 10 minutes. The packet says to do 12 to be fully cooked, so I think we're about right. We're going to use our little strainer, and we're going to put our pasta right in the sauce. And don't dump out that pasta water, because if your spaghetti gets too thick, you'll want to ladle a little bit of that water into it thin it out just a little bit and that's why you save your pasta water so let me get the rest of this in and then we'll come back cut our pasta in the sauce and we've got it on low low heat low simmer and we're going to cook this pasta in the sauce remember so every couple minutes come give this a stir now if you see the noodles, how the sauce isn't quite coating them yet, that means your sauce isn't quite thick enough. But uh, it will get there very soon, believe me. So let's let this simmer for a bit. If it doesn't come right back to a simmer, go ahead and turn it back up to medium until you get it simmering, and then uh, kick it back down to low. been about five minutes you see how the sauce has thickened up quite a bit so now the next process like in any good spaghetti is we're going to throw in finish it with a half a cube of butter we're going to melt that right down in there and then we only got one more step before this dinner is done our butter has melted in there and our pasta is pretty much done it's all the way cooked now, if I had some St. George cheese, which is a good Portuguese cheese, come from the island of St. George in the Azores, uh, we would grate about a half a cup of that and throw it in here. It would be fantastic. But St. George cheese is hard to come by, especially out here in Nebraska. But it's kind of like a hard-aged white cheddar. If uh, you had that, that would be a good substitute. We're going to do the next best thing, which is some Parmesan. It's what the Italians would do. So we're going to put about a half a cup of that on there and we'll stir that in and then we're ready to eat. There you go folks, Portuguese spaghetti, put a little dried parsley on top of that. And then now for me, we're going to get a little bit of our homemade chili powder. A little bit of that on there to heat it up a little bit and that's going to be fantastic so as usual stay safe stay healthy we hope you try this recipe it's fantastic we love you guys come back and see us here on mark kelly farm catch you later